day 30 of the New Testament by Pentecost Reading Challenge. Today we read the rest of Luke, chapters 19 through 24, and dip our toe into Acts, reading chapter 1. We've covered the dating of these books. Today I invite you to reflect a bit on our part of the story. It's been almost four weeks since Easter, and today we revisit Holy Week, reading Luke's version. How, in the midst of the ongoing confusion of our pandemic, do these events strike you? How do we experience the hope and promise of resurrection here and now? And today we continue reading into the first chapter of Acts, as the story of the Jesus movement continues and begins to spread. Note how similar the introductions of both Luke and Acts are. Marcus Borg writes, There was a practical reason that the author wrote this single work in two volumes. In the ancient world, the maximum length of a scroll was about 30 feet. Anything longer was heavy and awkward to work with and use. These two books are clearly part of one process. Theopolis could be a person's name, or perhaps it's a title of sort. It means friend of God, or beloved of God, or loving God in the Greek. Thus, Theopolis is you and I if we hear and respond to the gospel, the good news the author of Luke and Acts is sharing. Some key insights. From the Wesley Study Bible, a core term, wholeness of Scripture. Different people wrote the Bible at different times in different places. Wesley believed, though, that all these writings work together to help us understand our salvation through Jesus Christ. He argued that no portion of the Bible should be lifted out and used in isolation. Instead, every individual passage of Scripture needs to be interpreted in light of the whole message that Scripture wants to convey about God's love and care. Some parts of Scripture may seem to contradict other parts, and when they do, each needs to be examined in light of what Wesley called the general tenor, or the whole scope, or tenor of Scripture. This practice means that Christians should avoid proof texting, simply looking for a sentence or phrase that prove or support a point that one wants to make. Instead, Christians need to read each passage of the Bible in the context of the whole story that God wants to tell through it and through us. In the big picture, we've now come to the end of our reading of all four Gospels. I invite you to reflect on how each presents Jesus a little bit differently. There have been, many times, effort to harmonize all four into one narrative, but the Church has wisely and repeatedly and intentionally resisted those efforts. These narratives are not straight reporting of events. They are theology and proclamation. They are about entering into the experience of being with Jesus and they proclaim the hope that Jesus is yet with us, even as they each approach that task with somewhat different points and emphases. What has stood out most to you? Which gave you new insights? Which was least or most familiar? Each has wonder, awe, comfort, and challenge to offer, and it is worth regularly rereading them. Our long practice of just reading short passages, in my opinion, mask the beauty and power of the full narratives, and leaves us a bit too prone to think that the Bible is basic instructions for leaving earth, instead of a complex library of different attempts to explain the ultimately unexplainable experience of God being with us. Blessings on your reading.